All right. Well, uh, I guess a couple logistics on my end before I begin, begin. Uh, thank you all for giving me your kind attention during the last few days. I really appreciate it. And yeah, you're welcome. Praise God. I'm, it, yeah, if, if any of it has been a little bit helpful at all, then mission accomplished. So, sincerely, thank you. Um, but I leave you with one final uh, charge from Romans chapter 12. And uh, Isaiah, who was leading worship, actually read this to you the other night. And so it's fitting. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Being a Christian, I mean, becoming a Christian, is one of the easiest and the hardest things in the world at the same time. The easiest, because the barrier to entry is, well, barely off the ground. Trust in Christ. Give Him everything and yet, it costs you nothing to do so. You turn to him, you cry out to him, Lord Jesus, be merciful to me, a sinner, and he will. And yet the road from there is difficult. Well, trials and dangers. Stepping onto the road is easy. If we imagine life as this narrow pathway, as God often describes it, and we're all in the ditch on either side, our starting place, getting onto the road and stepping onto it and beginning to walk down it is easy. Walking the narrow road is hard. And I think this text, among others, exhorts us to be a Christian all the time, everywhere. And that's really what we do when we build this Christian worldview. It's called a worldview for a reason. The way that you look at every area of your life, you're asking the right questions rather than the wrong ones. You're asking the question, what does God require of me here? What does God think about this? What would God have of me in this area? About how I feel, about how I think, about how I live. And for many of you who have a lot less cares at the moment in some ways than adults do, but in other ways you have many more. The pressures that you feel from the world are often greater. And so we see in this text both the solution and the problem. The temptation to be conformed to this world. The solution is, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies, your whole life, as a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your worship. God, in giving you new life, then requires that all of it be offered up to Him. And this is not a burden, but a joyous service. This is our worship, not our slavery, not our oppression of the heavy hand of a tyrant, but the loving instruction of our Father. The mercies of Christ the power of the Spirit. And in so doing, that is how we are not conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of our mind, by offering all of ourselves to God. What would you have me do, God, here and here and here? How would you have me relate to this person? How would you have me deal with my enemies? He tells us, forgive them, love them. Bring the good news to them. How would you have me relate to my parents? Honor them. How would you have me think about science, logic, math? How would you have me live as a student and then as whatever uh, other occupations you then take? What you, where you work, how you play, who you marry, how you raise your children, all of those questions must be answered biblically. 
to offer them to God as worship. That's what the end of the verse means. To prove what the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect. God's will is not mysterious and hiding in a corner. It's right here. You can open this. You can read it. You can understand it. There are difficult places. There are things you won't understand. There are things you, you again, will never know. But what you need for life and godliness, what you need to be a Christian, what you need to follow Christ is all in God's sufficient word. And you must follow him everywhere all the time. Cultural Christianity, or a Christian in name only, is no Christian at all. Christianity is not just for your Sundays, and your Wednesdays. It's not just a place to meet with your friends. It's not just a place to have an experience. Some people call, some churches will call their Sunday morning worship gatherings that. The Sunday experience. No. It is about the worship of the triune God. This is both the most serious thing in the world, the most joyful thing in the world, the easiest thing in the world, and the hardest thing in the world, all at the same time. And those aren't contradictions because it's in different ways and different senses. It's easy, again, to get in. It's hard to follow, to deny yourself, to take up your cross. But this is what we must do. I would urge you all, if you remember nothing else that I've said, then, again, I said this in the session about Scripture, this is the sufficient standard for how to live in every area of life. But, in order for that living in those areas to be done not out of slavish fear, but out of joyful obedience, you must be a Christian first. It is a renewed mind, a transformed heart. By the mercies of God, I appeal to you. I urge you to offer yourself as a sacrifice, which means that you must have experienced God's mercy first. So we must, not just once, but the rest of our lives, always be turning to Christ for mercy. The way you get in is the way you continue. You repent and believe the gospel, and then you continue to repent and believe the gospel for the rest of your life. It's that faithfulness over a long life that shows that you were not just a Christian in name only, but one all the time, everywhere. So if you would, allow me to pray for all of you, and for all of us, myself included, that we would do so, and then we will be done. All right, let's pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thank you for giving us this time this week to dig deep into your word, to look at how we can look at all these areas the way that you want us to. Pray for your mercy and grace in all of our lives. You would conform us to your image. You would renew our minds so that we can offer up ourselves for your glory as, as a life of, of worship to you. And we know that you find that worship acceptable on the basis not of our obedience, but on the obedience of Jesus Christ. So we appeal through him come to you through Him and Him alone. Help us. Help us to obey. Help us to think by Your mercy and Your power. May we always depend upon You. Amen.